All right, welcome back to the channel. We're not in the workshop today. I'm on a family holiday. We're in France. We've done all the, the classic French things. We've done canoeing. Uh, we've been to a vineyard and uh, we've been to a fantastic market. But in this video, it's a pretty late video. I've done some really good planning. About four months ago, I said I was doing a QA. and a uh, and from that Q&A video, I said a couple of weeks later, I'll do a dedicated video and answer your questions. But uh, you know, my planning's great and I haven't got round to that. So in this video, I'm gonna be answering your questions you asked four months ago. I hope you enjoy it and let's get straight into the video. question is from Keith from Rag and Bone Brown. He says, what do you do for a living? What are your ambitions for the future in woodwork? Well, I just left school and I'm about to start a woodworking course in uni at a place called Ryko Wood in Oxford, where they're gonna develop my woodworking skills, teach me a lot of things and I can't wait. And I can't wait to take you on that journey with me. Right, next question is from Glenn and he says, do you draw inspiration from any other YouTubers? And if so, who? There are so many YouTubers I get inspired from, but two main ones are Guy from Guy's Workshop and Rob from Rob Cosman. They're literally master craftsmen. I learn so much from them and get so many new ideas, so I love watching their videos and you should definitely check them out. Right, so the next question is from Gaz from GG Woodwork. He's got five questions, and the first one is, where do you get your commissions from? Now, I get my commissions from if I do exhibitions, giving out cards, meeting people that way, friends and family and most importantly, YouTube. People watching my videos might contact me and say, can you make this? YouTube's a great way of getting your work out there and finding jobs. Right, so the next question is, what do I do with most of my projects? For example, give them away or keep? Well, a lot of my projects are commissioned, so obviously I had to give them to the people that pay me. Uh, a lot of the stuff I make, I want, so obviously I keep it. I'd also make a lot of presents for people, so yeah. Next question is, how are you so talented at such a young age? Thank you very much, Gads. I guess it's because I've been doing it for a very long time. I've been making since I was very young and I had a very good woodworking teacher at school who inspired me a lot. Fourth question is how long on average do I spend in a shop? Well, when I was at school, it was just the weekends. Now I've left school, it's permanent. I can be in the workshop whenever I want until I start uni, which is in a month. And finally, the fifth question is, what do my family think of the channel? Well, my mum's addicted to it. My dad likes it and my brother and sister couldn't care. So next question question is from Sam and he says did the tool companies give you the tools for the giveaways other tools in the workshop and if so how did I approach them or did they approach me well that's a very good question a few tool companies approached me and some of the others I approached them if you wanted advice I recommend when you email them just tell them what they'll get out of it a lot of people that will email the company will all say I love your product so much they're amazing they hear that all the time they just want to know what they'll get out of it so if you say I'll produce these videos I'll do a review I'll do an unboxing I'll talk about the tool, I'll demonstrate it, make pro projects with it, lots of different things, then they'll be more interested in working with you instead of just pleasing you by giving you another tool. So I hope that helps. Right, so the next question is from Stuart. He says, I have produced some great work, thank you very much. Uh, where do I draw my inspiration from to create these items? Well, apart from seeing other people's work and being inspired by them, if I'm designing a new piece of furniture, my design and inspiration is kind of sparked from the process I want to use in the project. I think it's actually quite a good way of designing something. For example, if I wanted to make a table, I would think what type of process do I want to use with this project? And let's say uh, bent lamination. I would want to incorporate bent lamination into making a table. Then I'd start coming up with designs that would work. So think about processes, what processes you want to try out and work them into whatever you want to make. That's how I draw some inspiration. Next up is from David. He says, have I ever thought about sending plans for the coffee table? Uh, no, because I didn't actually make plans. Sorry about that. Now, Sharon has a question. She says, what was the first project you ever made? I'm gonna take that as first woodworking project. I made a few before this, but the earliest I remember was I made a 3D glasses rack. It was absolute rubbish and I don't have it anymore, but I remember finishing that at the time thinking this is fantastic. Oh. Uh, looking back on it now, was uh, it's, it's garbage. All right, next question is from Phil from Phil Cannon Woodworking. He says, will I be getting into resin work like a lot of other makers are doing at the moment? I do want to get into resin work, but as you know, it's pretty expensive. I do have an idea of a project. I have this piece of wood at home. I don't know what the wood is, but it has amazing bark on it. And I'm thinking about wood turning a live edge bowl with resin around it, which might be quite cool. 
So you might see that in the channel in the future. This question is from Max. He says, would I be doing event coverage or competition coverage in the future? Well, there is an event in the future I think all the makers are going to, which is, of course, Maker Central 2019. Everyone is going to be vlogging that event, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing that. If you're interested in seeing my vlog, just comment down below and let me know then I'll be happy to do it, but uh, not sure at the moment. I might do it though. Another question from Sam, he says, what is the glue container I use for gluing? I'm not sure what he means by that. I use Type 1 Original for my gluing most of the time, but he might be talking about the glue block I use. The OGs of the channel will know from the beginning I had this old piece of pine that I use as a glue block. I put glue on it and then scoop the glue off that. My dream is over the thousands of projects I do in the future, this glue on the block will rise. Another question from Sam, he says, what glue do I use? I use Type 1 Original for most of my work. If I'm doing something outside, I might use Type 1 Free, but I haven't done that a lot, so Type 1 Original is the glue to use. I am nearly done. Another question is, what are your ambitions for the next five years? I sort of already answered that question, but after uni, the dream is to become a master craftsman and a professional woodworker, and I hope to do this for the rest of my life, and I think it'll be pretty cool to take this YouTube channel on the whole journey, and you can follow along if you want. And another question from Sam, where do you get all your wood for the cutting boards? I've actually only made about two cutting boards, so I'm gonna just talk on behalf of all my projects. Most of my wood from Timberline, their website is called exotichardwoods.co.uk if you want to check it out, but they have all the woods you can think of. And yeah, I really like using nice woods, because I think it's a bit more enjoyable than using MDF. So I forgot to answer a couple of questions yesterday, so I'm gonna answer them now. First question is what camera do I use? I use a Canon 100D. Next question is from Paul. He says, is there a technique or some kind of project that you're afraid of trying? Uh, a project that you've got the tools for, but don't want to try it. I don't think there is. If you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know that I've been wanting to make a segmented table for a while, but for various reasons, I haven't got round to it because uh, I don't have the wood, I don't have the time, and some of the processes went wrong. But I know what to do now, but I just need a lot of time. So sometime in the future, I'll make it. Paul also has another question. He says, do you sometimes have art block, the time when you struggle with the creative part of the project? And if so, how to get out of it? I don't really think so. The only time I struggle with a project is when I have a design and I have an idea and I just got to figure out how to do it. Sometimes I spend a really long time trying to figure out uh, what jigs to make, how it will work, what part of the project to make, like pr what process should I do first? And that can take quite a long time, but after I think about it for a lot and then do notes, I get there at the end with a plan and then I'll make it. So there you go, Paul. I hope you like those answers. Right, and that's the end of all the questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the cinematography at the beginning. I had a bit of help with that. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. If you've got any questions that you didn't manage to ask four months ago, feel free to comment down below. I would love to answer those questions. And if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. I would love to show you more videos. Anyway, thank you for watching this one, and I'll see you back in the workshop.